Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Guessman, coming to you on Thursday, October 3rd. That's right, ahead of the very last regular season game for the LA Galaxy in 2019. And then it is off to the playoffs. But the game against Houston is an important one, and we're going to tell you why it's oh so important. Also, Zlatan's birthday. That's always fun to go back and look at, of course. And uh, we have a lot of interesting LA Galaxy news, including the future of uh, Uriel and Tuna. So a lot to get to, small amount of time, lots of talking incoming. And in order to help me do that, she's back. We've even given her a nickname, which I will share here shortly. But <laughs> Sophie Sophie Nicolau is back in the studio with us. Sophie, how's it going? Good, mate. How are you? Very I'm, nice intro, as per usual. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we were we were kicking around your nickname. Cause Who's everybody, we? Is that you and Eric and Larry? Who's the we? Yes. Yes, that's, that seems about right. Yes. those those And Larry and Kevin. Was Baxter uh, involved in this? He was. He was. He, always, he usually is. We, you know, it was, our, <laughs> it was our powwow at the Mexican restaurant. So, um, right. so we were doing that, and we were talking. We're saying, you know, what is a good nickname for... So, and I think it might have been Eric who really kind of gave came out with it. I, I, it may have been, or it was Larry. He's very creative. He, he can be. He certainly can be. Um, but we decided that your nickname is based on two things. One, Uh-oh. your love for Arsenal, and two, your ability to uh, shoot or mow down you know, things with your words. So uh, you are the cannon. The cannon. Yes. You like that? Boom. Okay, good. I love it. Okay, good. I completely buy into that 100%. Thank you. All right, good. So yes. Sophie, the canon, Nicolau. From yes. now on, that'll be it. I'll, I'll get it. Yes. Can I just uh, yes. add one thing? Yes. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very conservatively uh, presented today. Uh, for my friend Larry, he 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 requested and, and good evening, Larry. I'm not wearing shades. I did wear my old lady glasses for you though, uh, because I had to wear a pair of glasses. Oh my! But this is the first time I've ever done the show without shades on. So you know, here we are. I was going to say, if we when we have your cartoon drawn up, we're definitely it's going to have shades. I'm just yeah. telling you, you're welcome to wear the shades anytime. Thank you. So uh, anyway, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to get to uh, tonight, but uh, I have to ask you. Um, I, I know you didn't get to go to the game, feeling a little under the weather, I, I think. Was. But what did you think of the, uh, did, maybe this game made you feel m- worse. Uh, what did you think of the Galaxy's mm-hmm. loss to Vancouver? I was actually very happy I wasn't there. And I haven't said that too many times this season because I love going to the football and I love going to games. And I was watching this from my sick bed and it definitely did make me feel a lot worse. Yeah. Because, and at 3-3, it, it kind of got to being a little bit like an Arsenal fan under Arsene Wenger. You score, you get to 3-3, and you're thinking, I still don't feel comfortable about this. <laughs> you know, and it's it felt like squeaky bum time, and right. wow, it the was. defense was absolutely horrendous. But what was worse than the defense, I think, Josh, was the inability to cross a ball in that game. I mean, 38 crosses. They got 10 of them on target. In the last that. 10 minutes, yeah, probably. Probably yeah. all of them. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, that's their panic move. If, if they're in panic time, they need to score. They're going to try to find Zlatan's head. I actually think with the amount of goals that he scored and the amount of goals he scored with his head, it's actually a high percentage play when you think about it, but they... They don't cross well. Rolf Felcher doesn't cl- cross well. Uh, they brought Jorgen Shelvik in at the end there, and I don't think he's a great crosser of the ball. Just uh, getting caught on the break like that was nasty. That's that's the a, whole thing. Was that's just a, that's nasty. a Diego Polenta thing. Um, you cannot, and he wants to be in the attack, and clearly when the Galaxy are behind, and then they tie it, as you so rightfully said. So they tie it three uh, three, trying to then get the game winner and salvage the three points instead of just the one. The one would have been nice. The one would have been useful for them right now. Um, but they didn't. To lose and, it and in the manner in which they did, that was just crushing. Oh, uh, LA Galaxy just one game away from the playoffs, which is uh, fun to say for an LA Galaxy team who's missed it in the last uh, two years. So uh, we're definitely going to talk about that, but there is a uh, there's a big birthday that we have to talk about first. And when I say oh. big birthday, I mean big, big birthday. Uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic turned the same age that I have been since July, 
which makes me feel... You, he seems like he Wait, has... Wait, are you still in your 30s? Yes, I am, thank God. Uh, w- one, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed that you think I'm older than that, so Well, that's... no, I know, I know you are, but I've, I've just got to kind of like ask the question as a 40-something. Yes, 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 barely. I'm 38, and like I said, Zlatan is now 38, and I feel like he's done more with his life than I've done with mine. I mean, I have 700 podcasts under my belt, <laughs> which is more hey. goals... Which, yeah, which Excuse is more me. goals than Zlatan has. I, I mean, mean, we know that. Come on, everyone lauding Zlatan, meanwhile, they should be lauding and... Clearly, obviously. Um, paying with, homage to this pod. We've, we've, we've clearly had the same impact on the world. But, um, you know, Zlatan, <laughs> 38 years old. Uh, you got to grow one of those ponytails, man. What, what do you think of Zlatan at 38 years old? Okay, well, um, he is an incredible specimen of a human being. And all of us who understand Zlatan and get his magic and his wonder, he really is an anomaly, isn't he? He is. In fact, to the point where I read this article, Josh. Yes. Doctors, okay, let me read you the headline as it stands right here. Okay. Doctors want to perform research on Zlatan Ibrahimovic's physique after he retires. Because because he is, he's... He's a. They don't want to. They don't want to do Carlos Vela. No. They got no interest in Carlos Vela. Okay, everyone. Just saying. <laughs> yes. Yes. True. Okay. And it's the one. The wonder of his recovery from the injury at in Manchester United right. and how he's performing and playing now as an athlete. And then the other thing too is, you know, his whole concept of. Remember that quote? Who asked him the question? It was genius. And he said, "I'm Benjamin Button." Oh yeah, there was somebody. Yeah, who did? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I'm Benjamin Button. I just keep getting. Younger? I just keep getting younger. Yes. And in true Zlatan form, everyone believes that Zlatan <laughs> is now getting younger. So they want to, you know, study the man. I understand. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So whenever uh, whenever Zlatan retires, he'll become a, a medical marvel. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that. <laughs> I doubt. I, as I said, I doubt, you know, as an ex-Arsenal fan too, uh, an, ex, uh, an Arsenal fan for an ex-player. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. not happening with Carlos Vela anytime soon, is it really? <laughs> Oh, I love it. All right. Um, so anyway, Zlatan's doing that. Now, you on Twitter, whenever I said, oh, that Sophie's coming on the show, you you said something that threw me into a bit of a panic, which was I said, oh, you know, you're, you, you were talking about Zlatan and his birthday, and you said you're sure that Josh will have some sort of chart ready for everybody. Come and, on. And I did not have a chart ready. So I was like, okay, I better hurry up and get a chart ready. So uh, I did do some digging. Did you do an Excel spreadsheet? There is an Excel spreadsheet here in front of me. <laughs> it's it's cut out. It's it's. It, I didn't get a chance to print it out. It wasn't that uh, that fast. But I even reached out to the LA Galaxy. I'm like, I need this chart. You need you guys need to provide this to me because did I have they a feeling you? they did. They did. Chris Glidden's awesome over there. Um, so we got some uh, some good stats here. So if I was to ask you, hmm. who was the all time leading goal scorer for the LA Galaxy? The answer is clearly Landon Donovan. Right. Correct. Okay. That that one comes to mind right away. Correct. Now we did this a little bit beforehand. I asked you who number I'm two was. I'm gonna be honest with my answer. Yes. Yes. And I asked you who number two was, and you said Kobe Jones. Right. And I said no, but close. And then I said Robbie Keane. And that would be correct. So right. Landon Donovan has this is a regular season goals. Landon Donovan has 113 regular season goals for the LA Galaxy. Robbie Keane has 83 regular season goals for the LA Galaxy uh, as the number two. Kobe Jones with 25,000 plus minutes played. Uh, he has 70 goals, so he's in third place. But the fourth place person on this list has played not even two complete seasons and is turning 38 today as we record. Uh, so Zlatan Ibrahimovic is in third place right now with 51 goals. Um, excuse me, fourth place with 51 goals. He's tied currently with Carlos Ruiz, who had 51 goals through his Galaxy career as well. Carlos Ruiz did it in 6,680 minutes, and Zlatan Ibrahimovic did it in 4,663 minutes. Um, if you want to know, is crazy. it was 21,652 minutes for Donovan to get 113. So, uh, he's played a lot, he's played a lot of minutes, but when you look at that, so, uh, Zlatan has scored 534 goals in his career that I can sort of verify if we count the one in Toronto that he scored his 500th. If that really was his 500th, mm-hmm. then it's 534 goals in his career. Mm-hmm. Um, since then, uh, he scored 51 goals in 55 games played with the galaxy. He's currently tied fourth all time for most goals, uh, 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 most goes on the Galaxy with Carlos Ruiz. He holds the all-time single goal-scoring record for the LA Galaxy, uh, which is however many goals he ends up with this season. That'll be the number, but it's at 29 right now. Um, so he's done that. He's 19 goals away from tying Kobe Jones, who had 70 goals and 32 goals from tying Robbie Keane. So if Slatan Ibrahimovic plays another year and he has another, let's say, 28-29 goal season, 
he will be right behind Robbie Keane, who was with the team for what five, five years? I think it was five years. Yeah. I think it ended up being five years. Uh, and he'll do it in three years. So this the, is crazy. So the stuff that we're seeing from Zlatan, and we I, I've been trying to over the past couple of uh, shows to impress upon you what you are seeing with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Um, I, Sophie, I think you get it. You probably get it even better than I do because whenever I look at it, sometimes it's too easy for him and I just can't put it in my head that what we're seeing is one of the most dominant performances in Major League Soccer history. It's unbelievable. And when you think about the world-class players that have come to play in this league and the dominance that he has... And here's the thing that I find the saddest right now because Zlatan to me has been joyous. Yes. To go to LA Galaxy games, if you take Zlatan out of the mix, and we love LA Galaxy, we we love the club. It's never about a player, it's always about the club, right? But we fall in love with players for reasons and certain players bring in a joie de vivre that not many others can. Wow, we got French on the show now I, too. I just okay. thought I'd throw that one in. Good. And, you know, Beckham was special. I mean, at the beginning, it wasn't so special. Let's admit, there right. were, it was a rocky period. Right. But what Zlatan has done is incredible. And be careful what you wish for, MLS, because he has added a flavor, a pizzazz, a competitiveness. He has added so many layers and stories to this season that without him, MLS would be kind of a little bit stale. Yeah. right now and as brilliant as Carlos Vela has been for LAFC he's not Zlatan and that is the truth it doesn't matter if he scores more goals if he ends up with the golden boot he's not Zlatan what Zlatan has done this season is what Bex did in many ways he took it international the league has been on the map and everyone in my opinion should be lauding the fact that we have this wonderful gem of an icon in the league and pray that he stays another season instead of going elsewhere. There was, uh, I forget who it was. It was probably somebody in the press box. So they said, you know, this could be whenever uh, everybody was there on Sunday for the Vancouver game. This could be Zlatan's last home, home game, game. I know. Because if the Galaxy don't finish in the fourth position or higher, mm -hmm. they won't have another home game. Uh, more than likely throughout the rest of the playoffs if, if they even get past that first round. So uh, what you could have seen on against Vancouver, that could have been the last time you ever see Zlatan Ibrahimovic if you believe that he's not coming back next Do year. Do you believe that? I, if you would have asked me mm, in July, yeah. I probably would have said he's not coming back. But now with the addition of Christian Pavone, with I the way that yeah. he has been striving and how he looks healthy and how he looks like he's just really starting to hit a start. I think he's tired. I think he's 38 mm -hmm. years old. I think you, you've seen that this year. Um, and certainly at the beginning of this year, I think he showed his age more so than he is right now. Uh, whether or not he was saving himself, and he will never admit to that, but whether or not he was saving some of that mm -hmm. uh, energy for what he knew was going to be a long road mm -hmm. towards the end here is, is probably a smart way for a veteran to carry his body and, and the way he does it. Um, but I now believe that with Pavone, um, with what the Galaxy... He loves Pavone. I think, that they could, I think that both of them will be back. I mean, Pavone seems a lock for sure. Uh, Zlatan is more up in the air. Talked to Dennis DeCloso on the last show. Um, we, we, you know, I asked the question about Zlatan. He says it's a discussion we have to have after the season. And Zlatan, by the way, doesn't want to have that discussion until after the season. Um, so that's both... But everybody's sort of saying when the season's over, then we'll talk about it. Until then, nothing. Here's what I fear. I fear that he has one romantic um, last play and that's going to be with Malmo probably See, and, and that's the thing that I fear the most and I, I almost feel like he can do another year here and then still do that just because of the way his body's going right now and the way he looks after himself so you know I I, I think every LA Galaxy fan I, I remember once at, at the at the World Cup um, the Sun newspaper in England they're stupid but they this is what they do in the center pages they would put David Beckham's feet and the country would have to put their feet on his feet or their hands on his hands and basically pray for Beckham right you know right okay. in all regards and then they do that with Rooney and stuff like that so I think that maybe we could ask Baxter to put a word in with the LA Times to do a center spread where well, yeah, everyone um, can yeah, pray I, that Zlatan stays I kind of like that that, yeah. might, that might be a fun thing um so anyway the last stat that I had that I wanted to throw in here because it was crazy and I didn't get quite to it in my in my rant but it's something that everybody should know um we told you basically that Zlatan Ibrahim Ibrahimovic has scored, um, you know, 51, um, 51 goals, I believe, in 55 games played, 52 of which he started. So in 52 starts, he has 51 goals. 
Um, that doesn't count his multiple goals that he scored against LAFC in his very first game if you do it that way. But hey, that's fine. So anyway, in 55 games played, he scored 51 goals. Basically, uh, if you divide his goals by his minutes, uh, he's averaging one goal every 91.4 minutes. So it's just barely one goal outside of a game. Josh, there are people in Europe right now that believe that Zlatan could have an impact on Manchester United. Yes. They're, they're, uh, uh, Manchester United fans are asking him to come back. Yes, they are. Listen, I still think he has, you know, you talked about one more romantic sort of mm -hmm. uh, move for him and, and whether it would be Malmo. I actually think, and we were talking to some of the Swedish reporters and uh, and one of our friends, uh, Gunnar, Gunnar was telling me he was saying, I think it might go, be going back to Italy because he loved Italy and, you know, where he could find a place. If he wanted to play in Italy, somebody well, would pay him the money. the only team I think that would need him right now is probably AC Milan. Yeah, but they're, they're so bad, I don't think I don't yeah. think he's going to want to go there. <laughs> he's better off staying here with <laughs> us. Come yeah. on, everybody. No, so I still think that there's a really good chance that Zlatan stays. So um, however that is, but he is 38 years old. What you're witnessing, hopefully we've impressed upon you. You may never see again. Uh, the next time you see Zlatan, if the Galaxy do get this home game, uh, which we can talk about, it, it might be the last time you see him. So again, just sort of put that in your mind as you're going because you need to take those mental pictures or you need to take the pictures with the iPhone. You need something because what you've seen over these last two seasons with Zlatan Ibrahimovic, I don't think will ever be repeated in LA Galaxy history. Um, he's been unbelievable in, in almost any way and he makes it look so easy sometimes it's hard for me to constantly if, you know, if, sort of watch that. Exactly and if the fans are gonna miss him, uh, even the press will miss him. He's gold. He's absolute gold for us. He's, he's fun. And he's so much fun. And he's always... I, I love his bravado. He can just get away with things. Yes, he can. You know, he's <laughs> yeah. so cheeky. He's such a cheeky bugger. He is. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think that he's also understood what his legend could be a few years ago. And he toned it down a little bit and switched up his arrogance in a, in a more likable way. And I think that's the difference between him and some other players as well. Uh, no red cards for Zlatan this year, he says, as he just as he knows that Alan Kelly will be refereeing Don't the last game against uh, against Houston. Um, so anyway, but I just thought that was interesting. It, you know, if people say he's such a thug and he gets, you know, I, oh, he's I, you see the comments from it's from people who don't watch him every day that they just, they just think it was the same thing with Fair Nigel DeYoung. It's sort of like, hey, yeah, oh, he's the worst. It's like, have you watched him play because he dominates a midfield like something I've never seen in Major League Soccer? Yeah. That was a that was a game changer for me whenever I watch that on a daily basis. Anyway, when when you before you go on, yes. just real quick, but when you think about how this player, one player, has dominated the darling franchise of MLS, you know, this team that really everyone in I think is willing to win. The LAFC story seems to be the story that everyone is kind of getting behind and everyone's willing them to win. Even the Alexi Lalases and Stu Holdens and Taylor Twelmans of the world. The lauding of LAFC is insane. The lauding of Carlos Vela is insane. And I think the icing on the cake, if he wins this... Right. Okay. He, I know everyone calm down. I'm getting my yeah, my head's yeah. going up. All right. But if he can pull this off, Josh, yes. it will be probably the single greatest MLS Cup win, I think, in history. It could be. I, I may be going too far. It There's could probably be. others before my time. But let me tell you, if he pulls this off, it would be unbelievable. It is in the realm of Hollywood, like sort of written scripts. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we talked about, and I remember, you know, his debut uh, where where he beats LAFC with the goals and, and everybody remembers that game. But, you know, if you wrote the script, people would be like, nah, that's that's never going to happen. That's unrealistic. You know, the guy comes off a plane. He hasn't yeah, trained. They wouldn't believe it. He's would come, he comes on, he scores two goals and ends up winning the game. Come on. Yeah. You know, and the first goals are ridiculous. Oh, no, it just, and, and I, I, I believe that, uh, that he is perfectly capable of doing things that you think are unbelievable. That is why there's always hope for LA Galaxy. Never give up until it's over. When it's over, it's done. But until it's done, this guy gives the team hope. And it, it's, it's like that scene in Game of Thrones. Remember when I, um, the, the young Stark daughter, when she got on the white horse? Right. Just put the MLS cup under his arm. And just <laughs> away he goes. All right. See, you're getting everybody pumped up in the chat room already, too. They're already like, oh, can this game start already? Can we <laughs> playoffs? Can we get to the playoffs? Uh, let's talk a little more LA Galaxy news. An interesting one. Let's go a little bit younger now. 22-year-old uh, Uriel Antuna Bless. has re-signed with Manchester City through 2022. Uh, I believe you were saying that Manchester City actually tweeted it Someone, out. Or... I think it was either Antuna's piece. It was, there was an yeah. official tweet that went out. Yes, okay. so, confirming. Yeah, the... either, either it's 
it's reports are confirmed. Yes. It seems likely. Nobody's denying it. Um, it's not an LA Galaxy thing to ask because it's not with the LA Galaxy. It's no. sort of one of those things that was like, it's not But it's really, a good thing. It, it is. Um, but anyway, Fox Sports Mexico was, I think, first to report that Uriel Antuna had re-signed with Manchester City through the 2022 season. Um, you know, Antuna was originally bought by Manchester City from Santos Laguna in 2017. Uh, he was loaned out to uh, FC Groningen. Um, on a two-year loan, and then with the LA Galaxy here in 2019. Now, um, he's had a lot of success this year. He had the Gold Cup in Mexico. He has six goals and four assists with the LA Galaxy. I mean, he's getting sort of the international attention that I think Manchester City wanted him to get, and also that he wants to get. Mm -hmm. So all of those things are good for him. Um, but then I saw the panic tweets. Oh, this means that Antuna is not coming back in 2020. Mm -hmm. And one, I think that was always a question. So I don't think that this makes it any more of a question. Um, but two is it's not like Uriel Antuna is going to go suit up in, in city blue all of a sudden and uh, be up in Manchester. <laughs> I mean, not with, as I think we were talking, not with the team that's on there right now. No. I mean, he, I don't know if he's seen Kevin Baxter's car. <laughs> yeah, same, but, same color. No, yes. this is, uh, I think this was the, I think this is the norm. I don't think anyone should panic about this. I think it suits Manchester City for him to stay in LA for another year. And it also suits Manchester City, a bit like we were saying before the show started, Josh, that they now have uh, protected their asset because he is an asset and he's a player that could go for quite a little bit of money in the future, depending on where he chooses to go. He'll have opportunities, I think, in Europe. But there's still a little, a little bit of development in his game, isn't there? Yeah. In terms of being able to kind of solidify a starting position in the top European leagues. I think that he could play in the Premier League eventually. I think he could definitely play in Liga and Syria and La Liga where the pace is a little slow. Well, Liga is, uh, is faster. But in La Liga or Syria, I think that he'd do quite well there. But for now, let's allow him to do quite well here. And I think all fans will be happy for him to stay another season. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything that says the LA Galaxy can't go and get another loan for him uh, mm -hmm. this upcoming year. I think it has been good for his development. I think that City would see that it's good for his development. Mm -hmm. He's closer to the Mexican national team, which means his international um, you know, sort of pedigree can increase. And he's comfortable being with the Mexican national team. So all those things are good thing for Uriel Antuna. And he's at a place the, where he has a guy like Dennis DeClosa who brought him in. And with Guillermo Barrescoloto, who seems to trust him. Mm -hmm. um, this is playing time. And if they're mm -hmm. interested in making him the asset that will eventually, you know, as somebody said, you know, I mean, there's probably a Mexican team eventually that wants to come by him, uh, which, which very well could be the case, right? So if they're trying to make that asset, because in my mind, I like Antuna, but I don't know that he fits one of the physical properties that are needed for the EPL. He's very slight. Right, and, and the technical skills are there sometimes, but they're not there all the time. So it, for me, this is never about playing in the EPL, but it is Manchester City saying, okay, well, we bought him, mm -hmm. and he's now developing, and if we sign him for another couple of years here at 2022, we might be able to, by the time he gets there, we might be able to sell him for a significant fee, and that, of course, helps our first team because we take that money and yeah, we turn absolutely. it back. So. I, I can see a La Liga team going in for him at some point, but I don't think that's going to happen now. And I think it would behoove him to stay with him um, with LA and develop his game a little bit more. And especially if Zlatan stays another year, who's not going to want to stay and play with him? Yeah, I mean, I mean there are plays I'm going to want to remove mm -hmm. at the end of the season. There are, yeah, a whole bunch, a yeah. whole bunch. But um, but what you're seeing there is that there is a good chance for a core of players yes. to return creatively and, especially and if that happens now you have a team that's played together for two years you have to imagine that they get better not worse uh, you know you that's just got to figure out the defense <laughs> yeah and that's where some of the players may be leaving and and that's the whole other question but anyway Uriel Antuna uh looks like signed with Manchester City until 2022 doesn't necessarily hurt the LA Galaxy again 30 games played for Antuna this year uh 28 games started six goals four assists he has four goals in his last six games uh, that he's played. He has so basically uh, he has four goals and two assists in his last six games. So he has been on quite the little upward That's trend. <laughs> Every everything's starting to come together, right? You can you can feel it. <laughs> Feeling like something's starting to come together. So uh, we definitely wanted to talk about that as well. Another little housekeeping item that we have to get through because I missed it. Um, I didn't miss it. It's just we had some busy shows and I forgot about it. So it was one of those things I put off to the side. But MLS did release, or not MLS, but the Players Union released the MLS salaries again for September. Now, the only update we really needed was the Christian Pavone mm -hmm. uh, update. Pavone coming in um, and signing. Um, and now you didn't know exactly how much he made because everything was rumored. But... Um, $1.2 million per year. That's in the annual. So this year, he probably made about a third of that because he was only here for about a third of the year. So whenever you look at it, you know, that's, you know, $400,000 or so if my, if my math I mean, I'm not going to say no. 
But, and you get to live in L.A.? Yes. Yeah. So um, so there's lots of things. But that was the one thing uh, with the departure of Emmanuel Boateng as well. So he leaves the roster. Um, we got the final numbers for this year then. The L.A. Galaxy spending $19.636 million. So $19,636,979.69 uh, this year, according to the <laughs> MLS uh, Players Union, for their guaranteed annual compensation. Um, so that's a significant amount of money. Again, the LA Galaxy is spending nearly twenty million dollars on salaries for their players in uh, in twenty nineteen. I don't care what it takes. <laughs> Pavone stays. It seems like that is a likely scenario. In fact, it seems like a given already. It seems like that was already already built into things. I'm hoping so. I, I'm hoping there's no glitch in the system here because he is someone who's really helped elevate the team and kind of transform the trajectory of the entire season. Yeah, it feels that way. Um, and I know there's a lot of people who feel that, you know, his addition could mean the difference between the LA Galaxy making the playoffs, missing the playoffs, yeah. winning an MLS Cup, not winning an MLS Cup. Do you uh, think we would be in the playoffs if he didn't come? No. I don't. No, yeah, I think I the really Galaxy don't. I mean, Galaxy I don't think Zlatan could have... In the end, Zlatan needed help. He took it as far as he could. Right. And then for the time that Christian Pavon came in, it was the perfect time. Uh, Christian Pavon, by the way, is going for a record, Sophie. He's going for an MLS record. he's only record. been here 10 weeks. Yes, he's going for an MLS record. Another uh, record. So on Houston, this game against Houston, if Christian Pavon gets another assist, he will tie an MLS record that has stood from uh, the year 2000. He's currently tied for second overall. He is tied right now with seven consecutive games with an assist. All right, which that's a lot. So he's come in, he's played, I think 10 games is what he's played. Uh And now in seven consecutive, he's had at least one assist. Amazing. Uh, He ties right, he's tied right now with Andy Williams, who played for RSL in 1998. So that was the first time he tied that one. Okay, so that's where he's at. And if he goes up to um, the first place spot, if he's able to tie for the first place spot, uh, it is eight assists. uh, And it was by, I'm going to say this name. I feel like this was a Spanish name that didn't get any of the accents. Was it Spanish or French? I I don't know. It could be French too. So it's either (laughs) either Martin Machon or or Macan or it's or, or Martin Machon who played for Miami in 2000. It was before I started paying attention to MLS. Way before my time. I'm going to go with Martin Machon for $200. You you might you might be correct. There's no accent. It could be Martin. It could be it just could Marty. Be, it could Maybe be it's Mar- Marty. It could be Marty Machin. <laughs> somebody's somebody's going to sit here and go, "You guys don't know who this you is." You I'm guys like, don't I, know who this dude I, is. I, I didn't. I thought it was a singer, but then I realized that you said Andy Williams, not Hank. Hank Williams. Williams. Yes, correct. Yeah. No. So, uh, but he had eight in 2000. So, um, if Christian Pavon gets another uh, assist in the game against Houston, he will tie the all-time consecutive games with assist That's record crazy. that has stood since 2000. 19 years ago, people. We're breaking records. Dude's been here 10 weeks, and he's breaking a 19-year record, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Come on. We're getting confirmation. Who doesn't want LA Galaxy in the playoffs? We're, we're getting confirmation that I was correct on the first one. So we're going, oh, we're we going, are? We're going in Espanol on this one. So it's, it's Martin Machon. It's Machon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so, so there we go. The sophisticated I'm, I'm, version. I'm, I'm glad everybody sort of got that, and, and, and we're there, and everybody's going to be like, you're an idiot, and then they're going to send me stuff. I know I'm an idiot. It happens, okay? <laughs> uh, I don't need the constant reminder. All right. Uh, with the LA Galaxy, though, coming up, uh, people of the press, such as you and myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw you wearing your press pass today, by the way. That's by the way, it's you, my new ritual when it, I come to the show. You're just going to wear, yes, wear your press pass. Wear okay. my press pass. So um, we, we will get to vote, or at least we assume we're going to get to vote. Sometimes it gets taken out of our hands. But we assume we're going to get to vote on two team awards. We usually get to vote on Team MVP, mm-hmm. and we get to vote on Defender of the Year. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the two that we get to vote on. All right. Mm-hmm. Do we get to grade GBS? Uh, we don't. We don't get that. <laughs> they don't allow us that. So um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, so you go to uh, to mm. the LA Galaxy MVP. Now I think one of these is like duh, and I think one of these is really hard. All right, so I will tell you that the uh, I'll give you the three MVP candidates who I would put okay. on my on my top three, and you can tell me who 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 wins it. Because again, I think this one's the easy one. Yes. Uh, Jonathan Dos Santos is certainly an MVP candidate for this team, even mm-hmm. though you didn't like even him. Even though I did not like him at the beginning of the season, right. and I thought he was a bit overrated. Okay. I stand corrected. Okay, so Jonathan Dos Santos is on there. Uh, Christian Pavone has only been here for ten weeks, but I think he is at least in the conversation. Hundred um, percent. Okay, so there's that one, uh, and then the third one for MVP is Latan Ibrahimovic. 
So, if you were going to vote, Sophie, which one would you vote for? Because of the amount of goals he scored, it's got to be Zlatan. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, this it's hard. a no-brainer. This isn't hard. You don't need to overthink it. I will tell no. you there's at least one person but in the press box... I won't say names because I think this Come is this is a on. this is a damning thing if you if you if you if you say this out loud. That no. thinks that it's Christian Pavone because the Galaxy would not be where they are without Christian Pavone. And if you're talking about most valuable player, I can't believe I'm making this argument. If you're talking about the most valuable player, then Sophie, the most valuable player is the player that you wouldn't be where you're at without that person. And so it's Christian Pavone. I almost just swallowed my gum and choked. <laughs> based on no, I mean, listen, he's had a massive impact, but. Zlatan's had the biggest impact of all and you have to look at it all the way around you know across the team and what he's been able to do without his goals you know maybe the team would have found a way without Pavon I don't think they would have but I don't think you could give it to him and I don't even I know you probably don't even want to talk about it because it's a no-brainer so I'll it, stop talking it, yeah it's Zlatan <laughs> it's Zlatan okay this is this is the one and by the way uh on occasion as they did when Giovanni Dos Santos was voted in as most valuable player mm-hmm. and stole the MVP of the season away from Yella Von Dom because if the reporters would have been able to vote on that one, which we didn't get a chance to, they did a fan vote. Um, it would have been Yella Von Dom who got that, and not Jonathan or not Giovanni Dos Santos who was given the fan vote, which I imagine wasn't Galaxy fans who voted for. Have you ever wondered about Van Dom and Zlatan in this team together? Have you ever thought? about that anyone out there thought oh, there, about there's that? been people who have had uh you know some some r-rated dreams i'm sure about <laughs> th- that particular scenario um no i mean it, w- it would have been interesting it, it needed to be you know yellow von Dom of what 2017 yeah yeah which was the first year yeah. and that he was and he yeah, was really yeah. strong with yeah he, he still had his mojo then all right so defensive player of the year i'm going to give you my candidates you can tell me if you think that these these three people are worthy or if there's anybody else sure. okay so the top three candidates for defensive player of the year year, which I think is a much harder one to, to come up with. Uh, David Bingham, Diego Polenta, Dan Steris. Those are the only three in my mind that I can make a case for. I don't think that the, I don't think you can make it for people Gonzalez because I don't think he's been very good. I think he's been okay, but I don't think he's been a defender of the year worthy. Uh, Dan Steris has been the most consistent defender the LA Galaxy have had this year. David Bingham has been asked to do everything and more and has done mm-hmm. most. And been criticized. And been criticized for it. Yeah. I, I'm not say, there, I don't feel like there's a perfect candidate here. No. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Diego Polenta is great on the offensive side of the ball. I think he's good on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Who do you think makes more mistakes, Steris or Polenta? I think Polenta makes more mistakes. But I think Polenta puts himself in greater peril than Steris does. I think Polenta's pace is what lets him down because he's not particularly fast. But his positioning as a defender is smarter, in in my opinion. And also what I love about him, he reminds me of actually an old, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but here's one for you, Larry, a Tottenham Hotspur player called uh, Gary Mabbott. Mm Mm-hmm who was a little heavier on the top and was unbelievably agile and athletic and positionally was really fantastic. And he reminds me of Gary Mabbott a lot. You can go and look at some old videos and stuff like that. What I love about Polenta is his drive, his passion. He always puts he puts his body on the line and he takes risks. But what would you say if I said to you Dos Santos should be in there? Ooh, Oh, come on, fight fans. Okay, he is, I I consider him, wow, I've never seen him make so many tackles this season. Thank you, thank you. Um, I would be hard-pressed, or I think it's hard, you would be hard-pressed. Anybody who covers this league would be hard-pressed to find a better central defender midfielder, central, central defensive midfielder this year than Jonathan Dos Santos. You know, women don't usually like to admit when they make mistakes. In right. fact, men don't, nobody does. But mm-hmm. I will say that, uh, in in particular for the second half of the season i was off on him he's risen for me and he's really solidified himself as a leader in this team and my god some of the tackles this dude has made have been game changing and they've gone unnoticed so when you talk about defensive oh. i know he's a cd i know he's a, mid, a midfielder but when you talk about defensive player of the year at times has Dos Santos not saved the team more so than the actual defense? Oh. I ask you all out there in the Galaxy Nation, what say you? Uh, I, I I want you to I know like how I just fried your you, brain. You did, and and we didn't talk about this beforehand <laughs> either. We talked that we were going to discuss this, and I don't know if you thought about that then or if it just popped up in your head right now. But it hurts my head to think about it because I'm like that would have been 
that would have been something that that could have that he could definitely be in my mind i immediately say okay you know, I didn't love all the defenders. Like I said, I don't think there's a perfect candidate, but maybe Jonathan Dos Santos is that perfect candidate. I think he's been outstanding this year. He's the been fact great. that he hasn't been recognized for anything, I may have to like start talking to 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 the press <laughs> about him. I may have to start like, you know, sort of uh yeah, just you know, I'm gonna have to start playing that up. It's like, hey, 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 Jonathan Dos Santos as mm -hmm. defender of the year. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. He did everything he could as well in that last game. Think about think about it must have been really hard for the team in that last game, playing with the, the goal, having a brain fart, the backup goalkeeper. Oh, uh, Matt Lampson. Lampson, thank yeah. you. It it couldn't have been easy, and but at the same time they didn't help themselves. No, they didn't. But they, they didn't. didn't. I'm not sure they had the same trust. I I don't think it was Lamp. I I look at that and I say, you know, yeah, maybe it was a goalkeeper in terms of coordination, in terms of pointing out things and drawing attention to his defenders and that type of thing. But I look at those goals and I'm not blaming Matt Lamps. You can't let a guy. You it was a two on zero breakaway. Uh, you know, that ended up winning the game. I'm not sure Matt Lampson, I was amazed he stayed on his feet long enough to force them Bless. to play around him. And that's why I say, like, Dos Santos sometimes did does things in games that just go unnoticed. And so, for me, I know that positionally everybody, he's not a defender. Right. Well, but... Well, there's somebody uh, somebody in the chat room uh, says, and, and rightfully so, so that uh, LA Riot Squad did give Jonathan Dos Santos Player of the Year award. Mm. Um and I it would be they've already voted they've done already, this well you know technically speaking we should have voted already too usually they do it in the regular season mm -hmm. and you don't vote because the postseason doesn't matter for this award it doesn't doesn't mean anything you usually these are regular season mm -hmm. awards so we should have voted too but the galaxy told me that we're probably going to vote next time but again I don't know if they're going to let us vote so we'll see if they do and then we'll we'll, we'll get to decide but this is a football democracy we deserve a vote i i may campaign i want to vote on i want to be the voice of the fans i may campaign for jonathan dos santos i think that he's the best defensive player this year i was going to tell you it was dan steris and i have reasons for it but i love dan i think he does a great job i think he's underrated i think that as i said he's been the most consistent defender for the la galaxy this year he's made mistakes polenta's made mistakes uh you know anybody who's played defense this year for the galaxy's made mistakes jonathan dos santos had probably one of his worst games against vancouver yes. which is still a pretty good game for yes, most people compared to everybody else he had like an 88.3 percent passing yeah. Uh, completion percentage and that's so low for him that yeah. it was like oh that was a really bad game because usually he's at 98 percent oh all right we're gonna move on we they got so caught because the defense couldn't the, on the counter it was just the gaps were just like gigantic the grand canyon huge yeah size oh. type type gap so the achilles hill i'll say I, i've said it already but because i think i'm smart and i want to keep saying it the la galaxy are perfectly capable of winning any game seven to two and they're perfectly capable of losing any game four to three did you just say seven to two yeah that was a great result that was, this week. and it was and it, and it should and you can see that from that team mm -hmm. again we ask this question all the time it's like well how many goals is too many in a game for zlatan is it is it Four goals? Is four goals too many for Zlatan to score in a game? No. Or, no, that's, he no, could do not that. At all. So is it five goals? Five goals sounds like a lot. But could Zlatan score five goals in a game? Sure. Okay, so now, okay, so that's within the reason of possibility. When do we start moving out of the reason? Six goals? Six goals seems like a lot. Six goals, you're like, nobody's going to score six goals in a single the, game. Here's the problem, mate. The problem's the defense. Right. And I'll tell you something. I would blow that defense up and buy a brand new one next season. Yeah, uh, just at the local defense dealership. That fly geezer has <laughs> got to go. It is. Uh, it he is. cannot cross a ball. He cannot find a player from across with a map and a compass. There's. They have had that problem again. If the if if the Galaxy get better service this year, Zlatan has like ten more goals, and they, I mean that's probably being conservative because how many have they just like blasted over his head? That where he's been wide open. You've got Zlatan. You've got Pavon. You've got Antuna. You've got Dos Santos in the midfield. You've got you know from halfway up. The team's pretty strong. Yep. The weaknesses the are at the back. Well, it's not just the defense. It's learning how to play with that defense. Because clearly, Guillermo Barrascolota is insistent that his defenders, his outside backs, get involved in the attack and be there in a consistent basis, get forward and be forward as part of the attack. But mm -hmm. they also need to get back. And getting back part is the problem. It's the transition. Yes. And, you know, people say, well, the Galaxy should play five in the back. The Galaxy kind of play five in the back because Jonathan Dos Santos' job is to get back into that center on the counterattacks and break those up. He's asked to do too exactly. much every single game. Yes. The dude must be exhausted. He is. You can tell. I mean, Zlatan Ibrahimovic has played every minute of every game that he's started. 
Jonathan Dos Santos has not, but it's not just slightly. They have the same number he of games played. He runs a lot started. more than Zlatan does well, in a game. He's younger. He can, he can afford it. All he right? can. Um, all right, so so that's that. Let's uh, One more little quick announcement that I thought was fun. Uh, the LA Lakers are going to honor former LA Galaxy player Robbie Rogers at the Lakers Pride Night. So uh, that'll be coming up on October 16th when the Golden State Warriors visit Staples Center. Robbie Rogers in attendance there on the Lakers Pride Night. I thought that was fun. He's a good kid. He's great. I, yeah. lo- I, I really like Robbie. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's always been kid. nice. And yes. uh, he's insightful, and you, you can really have a good conversation yeah. with him. Um, all right, uh, let's see CBA negotiations real quick. Just I just want to touch. Just tell on. me they got the jet, and then we're over. Yeah, that everything. There's two things that I want everybody to sort of focus on. We talked about the charter flights and how that's going to be a thing. It mm-hmm. seems like it's going to be a thing. So pay attention to that. That's something the players want. That's something the owners probably don't want to give because it's a lot of money that goes to basically non-competitive things, although the players' union is going to argue that it is very competitive. Mm-hmm. It's about you know the, uh, the the ability to recover quickly and to f- and to travel comfortably. Uh, you know, take a 12-hour day and make it a six-hour six hour travel day is, is a significant savings. So uh, that's one thing. The other thing that I thought was interesting, and all of this came from an SB, uh, a SB Nation article about this uh, that Kim McCauley wrote. She did a great job um, that was talking about this and they talked to, I, I think the head of the Players Union or certainly somebody who was in that in the Players Union was they want to get rid of TAM, targeted allocation money. They're like, no, 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 TAM's got to go. And when you think about it, it's an unnecessary thing that sort of makes the whole salary cap thing, it makes your head spin and it's difficult to control. Yeah. And MLS has used it uh, to bring in international players and to pay international mm-hmm. players, and it has not gone to the rank and file MLS players who are there. Uh, Jeff Lorenowitz made a case in this article that basically said, you know, if you could have make a team, let's say you just did a salary cap, a hard cap, mm-hmm. no TAM, no general allocation money, no TAM or JAM, hard cap, and maybe you get three designated players, or maybe you get two designated players, or whatever it is, but you can't go over the cap, you can spend it however you want. There's probably some teams that would go out there. And they'd have their least paid guy making $200,000 and their highest paid guys making like $800,000. And that would be their team. They're going to be these team from positions 1 to 30 that are all making relatively about the same amount of money. But the but the talent is consistent throughout. So they're a very consistent, deep team. Mm-hmm. right? And that's not what you see with Major League Soccer right now. What you see with Major League Soccer is a bunch of international players. Usually they're outside of the... Of, used, used with TAM or JAM or however, however you want to bring them in. But it's outside of everything. Um, and so you look at what's going on and, and the rank and file, the guys like Dave Romney, the guys like Dan Starrs, they're, they're not getting any money out of this, out of the TAM deal. So they want TAM does, gone. What does Starris earn? What's uh, he on? You, you, I, I, I know this. No, I know this answer. I, I have it. I, sh- I mean, I, I always... Because here's the thing. Until there's more... I forget TAM and all that type of stuff. There's, there's, if I remember seeing correctly, there's someone on the team earning seventy grand a year. Yeah, some I mean, of the lower. M- Matt Lampson's some of making us seventy. Earn a lot more than some of these players. Dan Stairs, one hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars in uh, in twenty nineteen guaranteed annual compensation. And you know that's not a lot of money to play professional football. Not it's whenever just you, not. Not whenever they brought, of course, Jorgen Shelvick in at one million dollars per year. And I would say that Dan Steris is a better defender he, than Jorgen uh, Sheldon. Doesn't he? Doesn't he deserve uh, more than that? This is the problem. This is what the league needs to work on the most for me. Well, and it's not. You can't compete for Tam, as as one of the players are saying. You're not competing for Tam. If you're a domestic player here it's in the not United that States, much money. you can't you can't get the Tam. They, no. The league won't let them spend Tam on you. Right. They'll be like, no, no, no. That's not what you're. It's discretionary. We'll tell you whether or not you can spend it, and you can't spend it on Dan Starr's giving him a raise. That's that's not something right. we want to do. Um, and so, which is bogus. Yeah. So that is another sticking point. That's all I want to talk about. CBA, Tam, the flights. Just keep that in mind. Now, everything we've sort of led up to said that the players were very prepared for work stoppage. Mm-hmm. Uh, the owners said that they're very prepared for work stoppage. All of the flowery language that we're seeing within this article says that they've had constant meetings that they've been keeping on this, that it is a good conversation that they're having, and they don't feel like either of these sides are coming in with any animosity, and that these discussions have been ongoing for a time. So it's not like this is going to be a last-minute thing where they get it. Now, it could come down to the last minute, but right now they're all feeling like a deal can be worked out and that it will be worked out. Is that like when when a manager gets a vote of confidence and then the next week he's (laughs) He's fired? Yes, exactly. That very well could be. 
<laughs> so just wanted to uh, talk about that real quick and, and, and get everybody sort of updated on that. Um, let's move on now. The weekly schedule for the LA Galaxy. Basically, we're Thursday. The Galaxy did train this morning at 10 a.m. Did you go? Did, did, did Larry not. go? No, and because media day is on Friday, which is why we don't have any updates on all of these like right. wonderful things. We don't know about Roman. We don't know about David Bingham. I'll tell you what I think and what could possibly happen, but you need to check out you know Twitter on Friday or Facebook on Friday. You need to do these different things and sort of take a look at them um, so that way you can understand what the Galaxy uh, might be trying to do this weekend. But media availability this week was on Friday. Uh, not Thursday, unfortunate. We get sometimes on Sunday games, we don't get that. So, yes. uh, But we'll go. But anyway, so uh, they will train on Friday at 10 a.m. At sa- On Saturday, they will train in the morning, which is usual. It doesn't say that they will, but I'm telling you, they will train. They will do a walkthrough on for Saturday morning, and then mm-hmm. they will travel to Houston. Uh, the game time then is Sunday, October 6th, a 1 p.m. kickoff time, but not really, and I'll tell you why it's not really 1 p.m., but LA Galaxy versus Houston Dynamo. Uh, then the LA Galaxy have a 2 be announced schedule on Monday. You would imagine the LA Galaxy traveling back to Los Angeles on Monday um, because they're not chartering. I've been told they were not going to charter for any of these rest of the regular season. So I think they've is saved Zlatan them all for the picking playoffs. Up the jet? <laughs> he can't, which is like one of those things that's like, I well, know, Zlatan wants if... to pay for a jet. Yeah. Oh, it'll be interesting. Why don't um, we all do a whip round? We call that in England. Do you guys call that when you're well, whip around, where you yeah, pass the whip, hat whip around? around? Yeah. No, uh, no, no. We, can no, we don't call like it that. A, but five bucks in it, and then every, and then you'll have twenty bucks in no time. Well, someone's bound to put in a lot more money than us. <laughs> Zlatan should put in a lot more money, right? <laughs> um, if you're looking for the injuries right now, Roman Alessandrini looks like he was training with the club. Uh, whether or not he gets any minutes in this is anybody's guess. I think that if you don't give him minutes in this game, if he's not ready for this game, then there's a good chance he doesn't play for the rest of the postseason. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one of those things that you sort of got to watch. Um, so Ramon Alessandrini uh, with that knee, he could possibly be back. Fabio Alvarez was supposed to be back to training, and GBS said last week that he was a possibility. Actually, he said probably for Houston. Um, so Do you think we've missed him? No, and I don't think he has a starting spot right now. I mm-hmm. think that, that Leggett has taken over that starting mm-hmm. spot for him right now. Uh, Perry Kitchen with the groin injury. I think the Galaxy have missed Perry Kitchen. I think bringing him off the bench and being that central defensive mm-hmm. midfielder uh, uh, sub whenever the Galaxy are up could be big. Still don't have anything on his groin injury um, and, and don't know anything else. I think there was a rumor going around that him? he... Uh, I, hold on. Oh, I think okay. there was a rumor going around about uh, Perry Kitchen that uh, he had some surgery on his groin, and I haven't been able to confirm that, and I don't mm. know that that's true, so don't don't lean that way right now. David Bingham, uh, the quad injury, GBS said after the game uh, against Vancouver that he should be back for Houston. Uh, right now, we'll wait and see what happens. Um, but we'll we'll find out what sort of what's going on on Friday. I have a feeling that people will be asking these questions, especially about David Bingham. We'll They've got to be, able to get be an really careful about that because you don't want to go into that game and have to sub him and then only end up with two subs. Well, and if he's on his way to getting better, and it's mm-hmm. just going to take a couple more weeks, if he doesn't play in Houston, then you have you know two weeks off basically, or a week and a half off because there's the international break. That would give him more time to recover. But I feel like the Galaxy would feel better if he is back in goal in that Houston game. I think the defenders would feel the same too. Uh, there is a giant, of course, Golden Boot race going on between Zlatan Ibrahimovic and. Carlos Vela. Uh, Vela currently at 31 goals. Zlatan Ibrahimovic at 29 goals. What you're wishing for in Houston? <clears throat> this is very simple. Zlatan hat trick. Vela scores no goals. Zlatan wins golden boot. But LAFC are playing at home, aren't they? Against Colorado. Against Colorado. What are the chances that Carlos Vela doesn't score goals I against would, Colorado? The, uh, uh, under over on that, I he's going to score. I mean, the Galaxy couldn't beat Colorado at home whenever they had the chance to do it. So maybe LAFC has the same sort of brain fart. And Hopefully actually, they've switched off. Colorado has been one of the best teams the last like ten games they've, of the season. Yeah, um, they've and, gone into it. I think they they were playing for Timmy, weren't they? They were, and I also think that Robin Frazier coming in is has mm-hmm. been a real solid thing for them. So it is uh, 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 Tim Howard's last game yes. it is demarcus beasley's last game it is nick Ramondo's. it won't be because he's in the playoffs but uh nick Ramondo will be coming up as as well so that's where we're at right there uh if they end up tied if Zlatan scores two goals, Carlos Vela scores one. If Vela scores one and Zlatan scores three and they end up tied, they will both be <laughs> golden boot winners as far as I know. I don't think there is a tiebreaker on this. I think Zlatan is going to shoot every chance he gets. There's something that's gotten under his skin about how Vela's been lauded. and We've, we've been in the press conferences when 
when he said, hey, when I was 29, I was playing in the major leagues and stuff like that. So yeah. it's been a good tete-a-tete. -tete. It's been exciting. I think it's great for the rivalry and the fact that the two main players have been going at it. I don't think it gets much better than that. Let's hope that Zlatan puts the icing on the football cake. Well, I think the Galaxy need that to happen as well. We'll talk about that here momentarily. Uh, LA Galaxy, by the way, Soccer City USA. It's not even close right now. Uh, between oh. With LAFC and LA Galaxy, with Zlatan and Vela, uh, there is no, no city way. in the United States that even comes close. In Seattle and Portland, you can all cry yourselves to sleep knowing that Los Angeles has once again captured another title that you used to have. Drop the mic. There we go. Okay, good. Uh, Eastern Conference uh, standings right now. Uh, everything's mm -hmm. locked in over there. Just don't know about seeding, and I think we talked about that on Monday, so I won't go through it too much. Uh, it's New York City FC who has that number one spot there. They can't be top, so New York City FC will be the get that first round by in the Eastern Conference. Uh, LAFC has that first round by in the Western Conference. We have, uh, let's see, five of the seven spots locked up, but there are four teams vying for the last two spots, and that's what this week weekend will be all about is figuring out wh who the last two teams are coming in and what their chances are of making that playoff. So currently it's between the Portland Timbers who sit in sixth, FC Dallas in seventh, San Jose Earthquakes in eighth. Those are the three that have the best chances of making the MLS playoffs. And then the Colorado Rapids who do still have a chance, although it's a slim one, mm -hmm. um, but they have a really good chance of finishing eighth, which won't really help them. Well, look, the fact that they have something to play for is, uh, is a good thing. Well, yeah, against. I mean, they, they do. They do. I mean, they're there, but it's. I think they have to beat LAFC by like three goals or yeah, something like that. Yeah, but they'll put in a shift against uh, Vela, and maybe maybe he won't score, but they, they it's likely he will. They very well could. Um, they very well could. So that's what we have for, uh, for the standings right now. Now... Um, the big sort of deal that we always have to look at is is what are sort of the chances of everybody finishing everywhere and, and what does that mean? Um, I'll tell you right now that Portland has a, let's see if I can do this correctly. Portland has a 61% chance of finishing sixth right now, according to 538. Um, if you want to go down to FC Dallas, FC Dallas has a 56% chance of finishing seventh. And a twenty-eight percent chance of finishing sixth. What is this data based this, on? This I have, they have they have fancy algorithms. I trust I trust these guys do way more than I'm able to do with numbers. Right. So I, I trust this. Uh, Colorado has a ninety-five percent chance of finishing ninth, or a four percent chance of finishing eighth, or a less than one percent chance of finishing seventh. So that that chance of them getting into the into the playoffs was is minuscule. I just wanted to sort of point mm. that out as as we look at that. Um, wow. Here we go. Let's go into the games that everybody needs to watch. You need to watch three games, and we talked about them all kicking off at 1 p.m. Except, take my it, notes. yeah, yeah, get, get it ready. Uh, we talked about them all kicking off at 1 p.m., but that is not the case. Uh, all the games will kick off at the same time, but it looks like they're all going to match up with the nationally televised game of the ESPN game, and that kickoff is actually going to be around 1:25. So 25 minutes after when everybody said they were going to kick off, it seems like 1:25 might be that time now that could change so get to your tv sets get ready for one um and there's 200 plus galaxy fans traveling to houston as well so um you know get there for the start of the game at one but it looks like that kickoff could be 125 so keep that in mind as you watch the clock tip up and you wonder why nobody's kicked off yet 125 seems like that kickoff time uh is there uh the three games that you're gonna watch the first one you're going to want to watch the LA Galaxy play the Houston Dynamo. That is the number one game on my agenda for the weekend. And we're going to talk about that one here in just a second. The other game that you need to watch is Seattle versus Minnesota. Uh, Seattle mm. versus Minnesota is a good one. Seattle is hosting Minnesota. Seattle has a 54% chance to win. Minnesota has a 23% chance to win. And there's a 23% chance of a draw. Okay, that draw is important. We'll come back to it. The other game that you want to watch is the Vancouver uh, is hosting Real Salt Lake. Those are the other game. That's the other. So those are the three games you need to watch because those are the three games that can affect where the LA Galaxy finish. Again, all 12, uh, 12 games, all twenty four teams in action right now. So, Sophie, yes. I have all three. By the way, well, the, the... yes. Yeah. You, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you needed me to take a break. I, know. I needed to take a break after that because I've had, now I have anxiety. I was excited at the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. Now I have anxiety. All right. Uh, if the Galaxy win, let's go over the playoff scenarios. Okay. Okay. If the Galaxy win and uh, Seattle versus Minnesota draw, the Galaxy can get second place. So that game, Seattle versus Minnesota, if they draw and the Galaxy win, second place for the LA Galaxy. That's as high as they can finish. They can finish as high as second, as low as fifth. We'll give you where they can finish in between. 
So that's if the Galaxy win and there's a draw in that game, Galaxy finished second in the Western Conference. Which is what we all want. Yeah, it's, it would be. It would set up a nice matchup in the Western Conference Finals against Crosstown Rival. Yes. Um, so that would be interesting to see. If the Galaxy win and either Seattle wins the game or Minnesota wins the game, it doesn't matter who, the Galaxy would finish third. Mm-hmm. Okay, so third place if either Seattle or Minnesota win that game. That's if the Galaxy win. Okay, mm-hmm. if the Galaxy draw. If the Galaxy draw and RSL beats Vancouver, the Galaxy would finish fifth. Okay, Ew. that's as low as they can finish, fifth. That's not a home game. It's not a home game. And that is the only position in which they will not have a home game in the first round. Uh, they can finish second to fifth, but second to fourth guarantees them that first round home game. We need to be at home. So, And that's important because of the, of the, uh, the record the Galaxy have at home, the record the Galaxy have on the road. This is correct. If the Galaxy draw and RSL loses or draws at Vancouver, then the Galaxy would finish in fourth place. Fourth. So anything other than uh, than a win for Vancouver against uh, RSL, or excuse me, anything other than a win for RSL at Vancouver or or a draw at Vancouver, the Galaxy would finish in fourth place. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So okay. that's if the Galaxy draw. Let's just say the Galaxy win. Yes. And you said that at the beginning. So they win. Yes. And everybody else wins. Right. They would finish in third place. Okay. Yeah, like that's that's probably where it would sit. The, right. The third place, and I'll give you the percentages of what chance they have okay. of finishing in each. But the percentages really show them basically that third is probably their highest potential. Or actually, I think fourth is their highest potential. They won't move at all. Um, but that takes into account some other things happening. I can see Seattle and Minnesota drawing, drawing. that game. Yeah. They both want to win because whoever wins gets second place. Yeah. So that's going to really be very cautious in that game, aren't they? I don't know. You think? I think Seattle comes balls to the second wall. Second half, they'll yeah. do that. Um, so anyway, so that's it. Uh, fourth place if RSL loses or draws at Vancouver in the Galaxy draw. If the Galaxy lose and RSL wins, the Galaxy finish fifth. Uh, if the Galaxy lose and RSL draws or loses, the Galaxy finish fourth. Yeah, I know. Lots of stuff. Those are the only things, though. Second, third, fourth, or fifth. That's how it all goes. The Galaxy win. They're guaranteed at least third. Okay? That's okay. the simple. Okay, if, if you want the simple one, that's the simple one. Yes. Uh, the Galaxy have a 8% chance of finishing in second place. Eight. Eight percent. That would mean that they okay, draw... The, this is why I really don't like algorithms. Sorry. <laughs> yep, Sorry. That's okay. Excuse me. Uh, third place, 26%. All right. Uh, fourth place, 42%. And fifth place, 24% for the LA Galaxy. So that means that if you add up all those percentages, yes. that the Galaxy have a 76% chance of finishing fourth or higher. So you were talking about the home game? Yes. There you go. That's what it is. Seventy-six percent chance that they finish okay. with a home game. Okay, surely, does that make you feel better? Surely we can do this. Yes, okay. it does make me feel better. I wasn't liking that statistic for second. Yeah, but it would just be like this team to blow it out of the water and end up finishing second. They could. They could. I mean, that I see. That's a realistic possibility. I don't think mm-hmm. that's outside of the realm of possibility at all. I mean, it says it could happen, and you could certainly see Seattle and Minnesota finishing to a really ragged draw. Yeah. In fact, that might be the more exciting game to watch. I think you know if the Galaxy can get off to a good start there and, and you switch beat, over. Yeah, I'll switch over. Yeah. Because um, that one might be actually. You know, I'll just second <laughs> screen it. I'll put it on another screen. And yeah. It'll be fine. Um, I and she with your double screen. Yeah, and then we'll go over uh, the 2019 playoff. Remember the Galaxy in the playoffs already. Uh, we won't know when they play until all of these games have been decided and all the seating has been decided. Right now, I'm telling you, if the Galaxy have a home game, it looks like they're going to play in the 20th. Uh, that seems to be the likely scenario, being there are a whole bunch of NFL conflicts for other teams, and the Galaxy do not have that issue with the Chargers for that Sunday. So that Sunday game on the 20th would be uh, probably the LA Galaxy hosting, more than likely a game on the 20th it could be the 19th it could be the 20th there has been no decision and no and it seems like it's leaning the 20th wow 23rd 24th the galaxy would play if they get past that game 29th and 30th uh when? they would get by um when when they win that game as well in the western conference finals so that western conference final game on the 29th or 30th is the one that uh when the galaxy get there uh that's where you'd be and then of course mls cup is on november 10th all right all right. Wow. Well done, Josh. Listen, everyone in the room, a clap, clap, round yes, of applause there we go, yep. for Josh for getting through the scenarios, the various scenarios for these insane playoffs. Um, yeah, I sent those to the Galaxy. I did them, and then I sent them to the Galaxy to you, check you me. You gave. And then, they, and, then, oh. and then they checked they checked them for me, and so they're like, these pre- are correct. So you pretty much probably did their job for them, Maybe. I don't, I'm sure they had them. I'm sure they knew in their minds what it was. Probably. I just wrote it down. 
Um, let's see. Let's get to questions real quick, and we're going to do these fast because I don't want to make this uh, this show last uh, too long. But got some questions from Reddit. Um, let's see. Uh, one, my favorite one, by the way, is from Danger TRL, who was like, "Since the hammer isn't there, do you want to know what 5:38 says on the chances of a Seattle Minnesota draw?" Which we've uh, sort of given you already. Again, uh, that is a 21. Per, excuse me, a 23 percent chance that Minnesota uh, and Seattle draw in that game. So, well, uh, that was that was fun. Thank you. Uh, for picking up the slack that Hammer has left, of course. Um, let's go to. Uh, oh, this is one's good. Galaxy Fan eighty nine. So I'll ask this one quick, rapid fire for you, Sophie. Yes. Uh, assuming Allison Drini doesn't play against Houston, how comfortable would you feel with his first playing time being in a playoff game? I don't feel comfortable with if he comes off the bench. Yeah. In a desperate situation. Yeah. Then it doesn't matter. I right? say with all the money he's been paid. Right. Roll the dice. There you go. Okay. All right. Good. I like that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Da, 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 since then, we got that one. Uh, here we go. Here, this one is from. Uh, let's see. K e b i f c nine. I never know how to say any of these, and I also don't know if they're offensive. So I never really, I can never read them, and I'm always like, I don't know if this one is okay. Uh, do you think uh, Guillermo Barrascloda will change the lineup again, or just keep the same lineup as the previous games? Okay, so if he changes it, who comes in and, well... Well, I mean, they did last time because Joe Corona, he yeah. was afraid, he he was resting Joe Corona because they were worried about his fitness. That's the only reason that they changed that, and then Bingham had an injury. So I would say if Bingham's healthy, he starts. He and, also started young Alvarez, which I don't think... I that, Again, all all the result of Joe Corona and that, because yeah. then Sebastian Legette dropped into Corona's spot and, and Af, El, Efrain uh, played there. So I don't think young Efrain Alvarez plays again if Corona is ready to go. Yeah. So to me, there's no changes. I agree. Okay. Um, this one's good. Um, <clears throat> realistically, how far do you see this team getting in the playoffs? Sophie? I think this team, if they, if they do the right thing against Houston and they get a home game, I truly believe this team can go all the way to MLS Cup final because in this Western Conference uh, final, I think we all know we're going to... It's LAFC, right? Yeah. Well, that's the given. But again, yeah. we don't know. Football's football. They could lose. They could lose. I mean, then Galaxy all the way, right? I mean, I say uh, you, if you're going to bet on a team... Bet on the Galaxy. Bet on the Galaxy. There you go. Uh, we've talked about David Bingham. Somebody asked about David Bingham coming back. Um, let's see. Would you rather have Zlatan or Pavone stay for next season? If you could only have one, oh. who are you bringing back? Rapid fire. That's like asking which of your children do you love the most. Yes. There's always it's like one. like Sophie's Choice where she has to give one up. I mean, this <laughs> how, is terrible. How, how perfect. This is Sophie's Choice. Uh, so, so Zlatan <laughs> or Pavone. Oh, Zlatan all day. Okay. I, I think I'd probably pick Pavone. I, oh, and the only reason I say that... It, it's hard. I kind of feel it's cause, stupid. Because he's young, he's younger, and I feel like that's a better, safer bet. Yeah. But I think they're both back, so... Yeah. That would be the that would be the best answer, but it, given that I was only able to give one... One, yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I didn't give you a choice there. So no, you didn't. That's how it goes. Uh, LA Galaxy facing off against the Houston Dynamo coming up on Sunday, October 6th. 1 p.m. kickoff again. I told you about 1:25 is the actual kickoff time. Uh, the Galaxy 16, 14, and 351 points. Houston Dynamo 11, 18, and 4 for 37 points. But here's the interesting thing: uh, the Houston Dynamo at home are actually pretty good. They have 31 points, 9, 3, and 4 at home for the Houston Dynamo. They're 215 and 0 on the road for six points. So wow. that's why they only have 37 points. Um, their home record is is fairly similar that to the LA away Galaxies. Form is horrific, but they're not playing at away. No, so they're it's, not. You know, but yeah, you're right. Um, that's you're you're 100 right though. But that the, away form is really bad. Galaxy's away form is it's better than that. 17 points. They have nine more points. 11 more points. Yeah. They have 11 more points than than what uh, Houston Come has on. on the road. Uh, so anyway, uh, the Galaxy five nine and two. Uh, on the road, by the way. Uh, the last five games, it's the Galaxy 3-2-0 for nine points. And last five games for Houston, 2-3-0 for six points. Uh, all time right now, it's all knotted up between these two teams. They're all the times that they've faced each other, 11, 11, and 7. Uh, whenever you go to, and, uh, to Houston, however, the Galaxy are 5-7-3 and three at Houston. Um, and that means Houston 7-5-3 and three at home against the LA Galaxy. So, uh, interesting. <sighs> Uh, let's see. You just got to win. <laughs> yeah, just that's the simple part about this. Is when you look at this, there's one simple answer for the LA Galaxy, and that is to win. win. Yes, that's not hard. That's no, not something that you not. need to sit there and go, oh well, I don't know whether or not that's going to happen or not, or I don't, I don't. No, it's it's one of those things where you sit there and go, okay, just win. Yeah, as Bill Belichick would say, do your job. Do your job. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. Yes, exactly. Uh, whenever you look at it again, we sort of talked to Marcus Beasley, his last game. Um, he's retiring after this game, so that's a, that's a Is guy. Is he like 100 years he, old he, now? Yeah, I think he's about my age. Um, so, yeah, yeah, about 100 <laughs> years old. Uh, so, DeMarcus Beasley. Now, I'll tell you that uh, Houston's coming into this loose. They were pulling pranks on each other earlier this week. Um, they've already been eliminated from the playoffs. We talked about that. They are 11th in the Western Conference. They're 21st in the Supporter Shield. Uh, the Galaxy, 4th in Western Conference, 7th in the Supporter Shield. Uh, Galaxy winners of three of their last four. Houston lo- have lost two in a row. Um, so, that's where we have it. If you remember, these two teams played earlier this year. It was all knotted up at one, going down to about two minutes left in the game. There was a Zlatan PK. I think there was a Minotas PK. Mm -hmm. So it was 1-1 on PKs. uh, And one Diego Polenta scored two minutes from time to get the header and win that game. So that was the last time these two played. It would be great if there was a hero like that at the weekend. They, I, I would hope that they don't leave it for that, but I, I would hope this game is put away at halftime. You know, it's two or three nothing at halftime. That too. But I don't know that anybody trusts the LA Galaxy to to do that. Maybe it's good to p- put an outside bet on Zlatan having four goals by halftime. <laughs> That's you know what. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you pull them and you give them some rest, okay? You, yeah, you're done. Exactly. Um, so I have a feeling that somebody, don't you think that somebody on the Galaxy, it's their job to keep Zlatan Ibrahimovic apprised of how many goals Carlos Vela has? I think I think Zlatan knows, but yes. But I during think... the game, they're going to be like, hey, Zlatan, Carlos just yeah, scored. Just His, this guy's just supposed to yeah. hold up a finger or two, yeah, you know, whatever two. it is. Yeah. So I wonder need... who would make that gesture from the bench. Dom Kinnear, he's the guy. Yeah, Dom. Yeah, yeah Dom would Dom do, will do it. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. All right, LA Galaxy facing off against the Houston Dynamo oh, we get again. the ex-coach bump as well the... against... See? Come on, the That's, stars are everything. aligned. Um, I think we went over all of the stats for this game. Maybe I didn't, but uh, the LA Galaxy uh, are... 34% chance of winning. The Houston Dynamo have a 45% chance of winning. And there's a 21% chance of a draw. I think you need to go to a different st- statistical St- analysis researcher. Well, if you remember last week... How can week, a team of Houston's ilk... Is it because of the, uh, the home The home form? team. And look at their home form. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, if you'll remember, which you probably you don't, but if we, our listeners will remember, Vancouver had an 8% chance to win last week against the LA Galaxy. Wow. That doesn't mean zero, by the way. That doesn't mean they can't do it. 8% is a chance, all right? Wow. So, Galaxy uh, have a tall order. Again, we gave you all the scenarios. Galaxy win. They're guaranteed. The worst is third if they win. Um, if they lose or draw, they could drop all the way to fifth, depending on other results. So that's what you want to watch. Those are the games you watch. Again, all 24 teams in action. I think only one of the games, I think it's Chicago Fire versus Orlando City, doesn't matter. I think that one doesn't matter. All the rest of them matter for seeding somehow or, or, or other. So uh, lots of fun games to uh, to watch. I think the LA Galaxy are doing a, uh, a watch party at the LA Beer Garden. So, um, are you going? Yeah. Uh, Am I going? No. <laughs> no, I don't think the pregnant wife is going to let me get too far away from things no. on the weekend. So I'm usually... I think I'll be putting together, you know, crib and... I'll break for the game. I'll get to watch the game. But I, I have some I have some stuff to do this weekend. Lots do, of stuff. Do to, lots of furniture. Charts? Do you use charts when you're at home? I don't, like... I don't read the directions <laughs> whenever I'm putting stuff together. I'm like, what? Who needs these? That's not me. Only on this show am I like the charts guy. In real life, I'm like, math hurts my head. Um, so anyway. It hurts mine. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Uh, very interesting. To You're see very how that good goes. at it, Josh. Thank you. I yes. try. Uh, we'll see where the LA Galaxy getting at. 1 p.m. kickoff time, 125, somewhere in there. Um, Spectrum Sports, and that's where you can find it, and that is, should do it. Um, anything else, Sophie, that you want to get to? I mean, no, I mean, look, here's here's the bottom line. You know, it's, it's been topsy-turvy. I, I predicted on this very show that LA Galaxy would go on a roll. I still believe that they will go on a roll. I, I think this team, when their backs are up, they perform. And then, you know, they have loose moments. But in one-off games, I think they could do it. I think they have the ability going forward to match any team. It's always going to be about how the defense performs. And against, you know, once you go deep into the playoffs, you're playing the best. So you have to be prepared for that. And the sooner Bingham, Bingham comes back, the better. Yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to watch. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. And I say, enjoy the ride, put your seatbelt on, because it's going to be a show. Yeah, it very well could be. Uh, again, this Galaxy team needs to win. If they're going to win at Houston, then they need to win five games in a row. So if you count Houston, it's five games in a row, gets you an MLS Cup. Five games. That's it. You win four games in a row in the playoffs, you get an MLS Cup. That's it. It's tough. 
That's tough, but somebody's doing it, right? Someone's got to do it. That's right. All right. Uh, Sophie, you want to tell people where they can find you? Uh, at Highbury Squad on um, Twitter. If you're into uh, Premier League and stuff like that, too, I'm at Soccer Diva on Twitter. Come say hello. I'd love to banter and chat with you. And thanks, as again, um, always, for, for listening and watching. And you guys rock, so thank you, very, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, Sophie's a good follow on Twitter. Go do that. Uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, at Jay Guessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com, where you can find all of our articles, previews, podcasts, videos, all that fun stuff right there, cornerofthegalaxy.com, including our stickers. We're still in the, the mood for some stickers. Those are over there as well, so go check them out, cornerofthegalaxy.com. All right, LA Galaxy, Houston Dynamo, coming up Sunday at 1 p.m. kickoff time, Spectrum Sportsnet. Uh, this one's for quote unquote all the marbles. Biggest game the Galaxy have had this year. Uh, win, second or third, lose, so many other worse options. All right. I think that about does it for Miss Sophie the Cannon Nicolau. I'm Josh Kessman. You've been listening to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. And for all of your independent LA Galaxy news, discussion, and entertainment, including this podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Fans, thanks for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.